How about this podcast be called Take a Drink Every Time I Say the Word Dog? Today, we're doing cocktails for a variety of reasons, uh, but mostly because right now I am kicking off my birthday weekend. I have a three-day weekend staycation planned with the hubby and no work orders are packed yarn is dyed chores are done it is great so i have quite an episode for you today of m1 yarns and the michigan makers podcast in case i had not yet already announced what the heck you're watching here on the youtubes no i have not even started drinking yet but i've got a margarita Let's dive in because we've got a lot of fun stuff to cover. So cheers. Let's start with what I'm wearing. That makes logical sense, right? It also makes logical sense that the moment I really start diving in that the dog starts crying. Jeez, I have the worst coworkers. I am wearing my Polaroid sweater. This is a color work top-down yoke sweater designed by Jolene Craft of Craftling. This is knit with my own hand-dyed yarn. I feel like if I do this, it shows off the yoke shape really well, but it's kind of awkward. So the dog went from whining to kicking the tripod. So let's see if we can get this episode moving right along. So what was I saying? Oh, I felt like if I do this, it shows off the shape of the yoke, but looks kind of silly. Anyway, this was a really fun color work sweater. I just dyed up, now the dog's sneezing. This is quite the episode already. Anyway, I just dyed up more of these kits for the shop. Um, so, they do include the pattern on me. So if you're interested, I will um, put all the information in the description box below. But this sweater was so much fun that I decided, if you didn't see this on the last podcast, which if you're a returning viewer, welcome. If you are new here, welcome back. I'm Jamie. I'm getting it together today. It's a little rough, but we're doing it. Now the dog is kicking the tripod again. Hang in there with me, folks. This sweater was so much fun to knit that I decided to knit socks to coordinate. And if you saw this on the last podcast episode, I want to say I had just finished the color work section and I was kind of moving down the um, leg ankle-ish section of the sock, and I was about to do the heel. So this past weekend, I decided I wanted to try a new heel method, and that is the, um, this time around I did the shadow wrap heel, which I don't know if she's the designer, but she's the most outspoken teacher of this method. Denise, I forget her last name. I'll put her name here, because I'm bad with names. I apologize. And Denise has made an excellent video. I watched the video and would pause it as I was doing it. And I didn't have to like keep rewinding. Like, what'd she say? What'd she say? No. Excellent video. I did the shadow wrap heel. The only heel I've really enjoyed this much in the past was Fish Lips Kiss. And I will say I like this better. Um, a few friends who knit socks had recommended it and just, I know my gauge is a little wonky because I row out on my pearl rows, but after I block, it'll be fine. Um, but there's no holes, there's no gaps, there's, there's no math. It's so mindless. Long story short, my, look at that, my little magi sock is coming along. So I just took a section of the color work motif did the math it this is a four stitch repeat and so i ended up casting on like a number divisible by four applied the motif to you know 
certain section and Bob's your uncle. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna make the toe blue to pull out that stripe section. Um, I was knitting this yesterday at a doctor's appointment and I was sitting in the lobby, which was packed. I've never seen such a busy doctor's lobby. Anyway, I had these little pink rubber point protectors sitting on my lap and at some point they rolled off and when they called my name, I'm looking for them and I'm frantically like, oh my God, I can't lose another pair of needle stoppers. I'm notorious for that. Anyway, everyone in the lobby had been watching me knit this sock while wearing this sweater, ironically, and probably thinking like, this is really interesting. Um, yet nobody said anything. But um, turns out the, the point protectors were on the floor next to me and nobody had said, hey, you dropped something. So thanks for that. So that's my Polaroid sock. It's not a pattern. I just took this pattern and applied it, if that makes any sense. Um, I'm going to mention this ever so briefly because I have a whole finished object review video on the channel about this, but if you missed it, you should go watch that video. I just finished my Wild Posy by B Mandarins, and I love this sweater. I love the pattern. I loved knitting it. I love the yarn. Look at the detail on the sleeve. The yarn is Cece's wool, undyed, which you would think that as a yarn dyer, I wouldn't knit with bare yarn, but I found this actually very inspiring and very, like looking at bare yarn gave me tons of ideas for new colorways. So that's fresh off the needles. New on the needles since the last podcast is a cozy classic raglan. Did I? I hadn't cast this on last episode. No. Um, I'm going to make this a t-shirt. It is my own hand-dyed um, Surrey Silk Street Base, which is Surrey and Silk, if you couldn't tell by the name in the colorway, this is either mocha or latte, something coffee-ish, held with this yarn. And this is Earl Grey Fiber Company. So we've got coffee and tea. Uh, this is their Darjeeling sock, which is a 7525. And the colorway is Moth Wings. And holding them together, you get this. So I've knit the Cozy Classic Raglan before. It's by Jessie Mae Designs. And it's just a basic um, DK weight, raglan, top-down, seamless pullover sweater. My other, my previous knitting iteration of this pattern is my, um, night colorway and I did mohair held with what did I use uh, my sock base lean mean machine and that's probably my most worn sweater ever it's just a basic like go-to so that's new on the needles in my um project bag by Lisa of Peapod Threads this was the project bag for last year's advent kits. And she is once again collaborating with me for this year's advent kits. There's a whole video on that advent kit on my channel if you're interested in the pre-order. Um, I think last episode I may have cast on or talked about wanting to knit a um, tank top for the knit along or make along, excuse me, for the make along that I am hosting right now, which is the tea off spring make along. And that is essentially for the whole duration of spring, March, say 19th, I think it kicked off 
through June 20th. And you can knit or crochet any tee or tank. We just don't want long sleeves is basically it. So for this, I was going to knit a tank top by Ponder and Ply. I was going to use her pick and mix um, pattern, which you can pick and mix all sorts of different elements. There's three different straps. Uh, there's three different necklines. There's three different hemlines. There's three different lengths. I mean, it's so customizable. I test knit it for her and really love it. So I had um, this yarn, which is Lola Bean Yarn Co. that I bought at Rhinebeck 2019, which feels like a lifetime ago. I don't know the color we name. I do know that it was limited edition, so you can't get it anymore. I was holding these yarns together. I had cast on a Pico edge, and every time I sat down to knit, it was not working for me. I don't know what it was. It just, it was like the yarn was speaking to me saying, stop. So finally I thought, okay, this is supposed to be just a tank. No big deal. Like, let's not complicate it. Let's not stress. So then I thought, okay, I'm knitting this other cozy classic raglan and I'm gonna make it a tee. Why don't I just do the same thing with this yarn? And then today, as I was gathering all my materials to record, I was thinking about this. And this is DK weight. And there is a second version of this that does not have the lace bits like up here and down at the bottom of the yoke. That portion is more textural like the rest of the yoke. And I definitely want to knit that. And I'm like, why don't I just do that with this yarn? So I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to maybe cast that on this weekend. So stay tuned for that. Um, I do have one other project I have teased several times. It's my sorrel. It's going to have to wait. That is a whole story and a half. So we're just gonna wait. Um, last but not least, this is really fun and exciting. And I don't know if my mom watches the podcast, but mom, if you're watching, turn this off, okay? Just I'll, I'll, give me a call later, I'll, I'll talk to you. Um, so the other day I sat down, I'm recording this in like mid-April. Well, in early June, I'm supposed to be vending at the Tip of the Mitt Fiber Festival in Petoskey. Well, is it Petoskey or they moved it? It's near Petoskey. It's in that northern lower peninsula of Michigan region. If you're going, please comment below and let me know. I am creating so much great content for my booth. And I had a planning session the other day with myself and thought about a lot of things that I need to do and what will I need to prepare. And I am planning to, to do a lot of kits. And then I thought, oh, I need samples. And then I thought, oh, that's a lot of knitting. And I already have so many things that I am either in progress knitting or wanting to cast on and wanting to die yarn wise the dog is kicking the tripod again but they are she's getting comfortable they're both sleeping at my feet this is a good sign we have finally hit a stride with the podcast gotta cheers to that so in the midst of this planning of kits and all the samples that I need to knit, I kind of had a little come to Jesus moment. And I thought, I can't do it all. And what I'm not good at is asking for help. My husband will tell you, I will take on the world before I ask for help. It is stupid. But 
I did set that as a goal for myself this year, personally, that when I need help, even if I don't end up getting it, I'm going to ask for help. At least I will feel like I expressed myself. So that being said, I put out a little call on my Instagram stories the other day and I said, sample knitters wanted. And I had a whole list and I got a ton of offers um, for help. And I am so grateful because I finally feel like I can breathe and properly plan for this fiber festival. So long story short, all the sample yarn and patterns and everything is off to my phenomenal sample knitters and I can back I can be back to doing what I need to do and what I want to knit and part of that is even though I really only have like three weeks to go I decided that for Mother's Day I was going to knit my mom a knitted animal friend and I've showed this before on an episode probably a year ago, let me give you a close up. This book is by Louisa Crowther, I think her name is. Yes, Louise Crowther. And I saw this on another podcast and thought, that is so cute. And I've never really done amigurumi making, which is mostly crochet. Um, I've never knit a doll. I love dolls, but when I saw this book, I totally thought of my mom. Um, something about it, just my mom loves dolls and my mom is like the world's best mom slash grandma type. And all the kids at her church flock to her like she's a, I don't know, like Mrs. Doubtfire. My mom's English. So there's just something like magical. I hope everyone feels like that about their mom, but my mom is really special. And my mom loves to sew. She does a little bit of knitting. She is a crafty person, so she is totally knit worthy. And so I'm going to knit her one of these. The first animal friend that I'm going to make for my mom is Charlotte the Fox. And Charlotte so the author is English too. So that's why I feel like my mom might like this extra much. Charlotte is quite the lady in her little uh, dress and knit coat and her little across the shoulder bag. And so I knew for sure I wasn't gonna use my own hand dyed yarn for this um, for a variety of reasons, but I did something crazy. I ordered the same yarn used in the pattern. Who does that? So the pattern calls for, I think it's pronounced sheepies, sheep, sheep. It's like sheep Jess. I know that's not it. I think it's sheepies. Stonewashed and sheepies Katona. Well, I went on Jimmy Bean's Wool, who has like every color, and I ordered all the yarn, and two days later, I have all the yarn. Through the miracle of UPS. So, let's see here. This is the body of the, um, of Charlotte the Fox. Sheepy Stonewashed is 78% cotton, 22% acrylic. So that's going to be the body. And then Sheepy's Katona is 100% cotton. This was the bag that I just showed you, her little crossbody bag. Let's see here. I've got the bag from Jimmy Beans. Oh, her dress. Let's do a visual. Her dress, instead of being like this light blue, I'm gonna do purple because that's my mom's favorite color. So I thought that would be cute. Oh, sorry dog, I just kicked you. Um, What did I order this for? 
Oh, she wears panties. Do you mind that I said that? I know there are certain words people hate, like moist. Panties. The, um, <laughs> the book is so awesome. These animal creatures have like full outfits. They're, the fox is not wearing shoes, but there are shoes on most of the creatures. And let me just show you a really cute example of one of them. Look at this owl and his cute coat and little tennis shoes. Love that. Anyway, they all wear underwear. They all wear, what are they called technically? <laughs> French knickers. And that's so funny because my mom always says, don't get your knickers in a twist. That's like her favorite British um, expression. Anyway, so I ordered cream for the knickers. Back to the box. Green for the coat. Do I have anything else? Oh, they didn't have black for the eyes and nose. So I ordered Cascade Yarns Ultra Pima Fine, which is 100% Pima. And um, it's color 3754, but it's, it's just black. The dog is kicking the tripod again. Um, so that's for the eyes and nose. And this was only like, each of these was um, like $3.50 a ball. This one might have been $5. Anyway, so I'm hoping to cast that on. I actually need to cast that on before I cast on any more sweaters. Uh, because it's knit on like a size four. Some stuff is knit on a two and a half. Anyway, it's knit flat and then seamed and I don't like knitting flat, but it's knitting the fox, stuffing it, then knitting the dress, the coat, the French knickers, and its little purse. And I have to do all this in three weeks to send this to my mom. So please pray for me. Um, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I had to take a drink late because I said the word dog. While ordering the yarn for my little knitted animal friend, I was like, oh, I should order myself something. So I got this Della Q. I didn't realize this was purple online. Hmm. This is a interchangeable needle case. So you've got this little wrap around. And then look at that. You've got all the sizes marked out. And you can roll it up. And look, there's a zipper for all your little like doodads. So yeah, I decided to check that out while I was shopping. So um, what else do I have for you? We're not even at half an hour. This is good. This is manageable. Um, I think anything else I have can definitely wait till next time. So, wish me luck with my foxy friend for my mom, and I hope you all are having a great, let's see, this will air next week. So, I hope you all are having a great week, um, getting some spring weather, and comment below, let me know what you're knitting on, if you think I can finish this fox in time for Mother's Day. I think it is a unrealistic deadline, but I'm going to try. I have I have done crazier things in my knitting career. 
Anyway, thanks for joining me for another episode of M1 Yarns of the Michigan Makers podcast. Please remember to hit like and subscribe and the bell and all that doodad around here on the screen. And I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye.